Hi, this is Micah talking about my love and life lessons 12 total that I'm sharing. I'm saving my last three uh, are the ones that helped me the most throughout my life. <clears throat> uh, today I'm going to talk about fear. And fear is one of those words like many of the English language uh, words I'll bring up later. But fear is one of those words that people use a lot as uh, with a negative connotation. As though the only fear there is is negative fear and fear that's disempowering. And that's not necessarily true. I read the book The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker and it completely changed my life. Without that book, I don't think I would have been brave enough to leave an unhealthy marriage that was toxic for both of us and became abusive and manipulative. And it didn't, it helped me understand other people. It helped me understand not just myself, but how other people think and how they work. So when you realize how much fear motivates us, then it helps you become more compassionate with other people uh, because you can understand them. Everything makes sense. And then you realize how little power control you have over other people and how they see you, how they see themselves, and how they behave. There is healthy fear. We are ingrained with that. It's uh, primal for us. to. We wouldn't still have that as part of who we are if it wasn't necessary for our life. But in order for us to feel safe and secure, uh, we use fear as a way to determine our surroundings. When we have some kind of trauma, especially in childhood, developmentally, the younger we are when something really traumatic happens, regardless of whether it's abuse or an accident, whatever it is that happens when we're developing, it can make us hypervigilant in fear. So we see everything as a threat. And the more things we see as a threat, then the more we're in a fear state. That's when it's unhealthy. And if it's developmental, then it's even harder for us to work around that as adults than if it's something that happens to us when we're a little older, like 15 or older. So when we are hypervigilant, we're always looking for a threat. And when we assume everything around us is going to hurt us, then not only does that inevitably become true, because we're putting this attitude of uh, being defensive all the time out there, but <clears throat> it also makes us, it wears us down physically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, and we begin to see things in this veiled perspective of fear, and we don't realize we're doing it, but we look at everything as though it's a threat when really it wasn't, at least to begin with, but it becomes one because we're constantly pushing this idea onto whatever scenario we're looking at as a threat. When we are in a cool state and we are not in that activated, somebody's going to hurt me, somebody's going to hurt my feelings, somebody's going to make me feel scared and alone, I'm not going to be accepted. When we're not having those that background noise and we can be calm and centered, then we are more adept at recognizing when there is going to be an actual threat, not one that's imagined, but a real threat. And when we are constantly fearful, our frontal lobe in our brain isn't working. It's not as, we're not as logical. So we see threats where they really aren't, and we miss things that might even be in front of our face all the time because we're so activated and our frontal lobe is just not working because we're hijacked. So when we can be calm and centered and we have to find practices starting with breathing techniques and then we have to do whatever healing uh, things are going to help us, whether it's counseling, coaching, body work, whatever it is that's going to get us to switch back down into our cool system where we aren't always activated, when there's a legitimate threat, we're going to recognize it. We're going to see it faster. We're going to know, we're going to be able to hear our instincts and listen to them, feel them, and we will be able to keep ourselves safer, actually, because we aren't hijacked. 
and we will be able to remain calm and cool and collected even when something really scary legitimately happens. So fear is our friend when we're using it appropriately and when we're not allowing it to control our lives. So that is what I've learned about fear. And that, along with that entire book, The Gift of Fear, completely changed my life. And it helped me understand other people so well that when I see them being hijacked, I just disengage from them because I know that whatever I say or do, they're going to interpret it the way they need to interpret it for them to feel safe in that moment. And I'm, me trying to convince them otherwise is actually disrespectful because of how they're seeing things. And it's also moot. <laughs> There's really no point because they're going to see it the way they need to see it in that moment. So it saves me a lot of energy and exhaustion. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on fear, how fear is actually our friend when we're using it correctly. And I have only two more left, and I will make one tomorrow and on my birthday, my favorite two subjects. Thank you. Make it a lovely day.